Welcome to this Smith & Nephew Digital Education Module on Abnormal Wound Healing. This forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. Today we will be discussing Abnormal Wound Healing. By the end of this module, you will be able to recall the process of normal healing and when and why wounds fail to heal. You will be able to recognise what makes a wound non-healing and also recall the role of matrix metalloproteinases, otherwise known as MMPs, in relation to abnormal wound healing. And lastly, you will be able to recognise the role of assessment in optimising wound care. Wound healing represents a dynamic, highly organised series of events. There are four phases of wound healing and the process starts with haemostasis. It then progresses through a destructive inflammatory phase which then leads on to cell proliferation and repair. It finishes off with epithelialization and remodeling of scar tissue. The normal process can be interrupted at any stage and is vulnerable to a variety of intrinsic and extrinsic inhibitory factors. The majority of wounds do go on to heal normally, but in some wounds, the normal healing process is interrupted or halted. Wound healing involves the interaction of matrix components, different cell types and biochemical factors, including proteases and protease inhibitors, cytokines and growth factors. This image takes you through each stage of the inflammatory process. It is here where wounds get stuck due to abnormal wound healing. Firstly, bacteria and other pathogens enter the wound. Platelets then release blood clotting proteins to stem any bleeding. Mast cells secrete factors which controls vasodilation and vasoconstriction and as a result, blood plasma and other cells increase. Neutrophils arrive at the scene of the injury, which secrete factors that kill and degrade pathogens. Along with macrophages, neutrophils remove pathogens by phagocytosis. Finally, macrophages secrete hormones called cytokines that attract immune system cells to the site and activate cells involved in tissue repair. This inflammatory response continues until all foreign material is eliminated and the wound is repaired. In the instance where a wound is not progressing along the normal healing trajectory, wounds will usually be stuck in the inflammatory phase. This creates an increase in inflammatory cells and proteases in addition to reduced growth factors and receptors that are vital for tissue repair and regeneration. In the instance where underlying disease and pre-existing conditions are apparent, wounds can be more susceptible to delayed healing. The majority of wounds often fall into three wound categories venous leg ulcers, pressure ulcers and diabetic foot ulcers. An early indication of abnormal healing is when a wound fails to heal by at least 40% within the first four weeks. Now we will consider what makes a wound become chronic. Often there are chemical imbalances, bio-burden or underlying comorbidities to consider. The factors that can affect wound healing are age and gender, medication, wound contamination, presence of vascular disease or diabetes, nutritional status, 
Immobility and Stress For many wounds, one or more of the following key intrinsic abnormalities will also be present and delay or prevent healing. These are ischemia, infection and abnormal or persistent inflammation. An holistic assessment will ensure that these factors are minimised to ensure good clinical outcomes. So how do MMPs affect healing in chronic wounds? Stalled wounds share common features including excessive levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines and proteases. These wounds are also susceptible to persistent wound infection which can also impact on wound healing. An early indication of abnormal healing is when a wound does not see progress within the first four weeks. The most important element of the initial wound assessment is mapping and measuring the wound. Changes in wound size during the initial phase of healing have been shown to be a potential indicator of the wound's response not only to the current treatment but also how it will go on to heal. In terms of managing the chronic wound, there are three key elements that need to be considered in order to optimise wound healing. These are to maintain a moist wound healing environment, reduce microbial bioburden, and lower protease and free radical activity. To check your knowledge and understanding of this module, try and answer the quiz questions. Well done, we are now at the end of this module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you have learnt today and apply it into your daily practice. It might be useful to think of some patients with chronic wounds that are stuck in the inflammatory process and how you might be able to manage those going forward. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link shown to access a copy of the revalidation form. The form is in two parts with a front sheet where you simply fill in your details and a back sheet which allows for deeper reflection. Adding to this reflection will mean that you will be able to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you for your time today. Please remember to look at the other sections to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.